Hello guys and welcome back to another episode. My name is Stefan Persson, also known as Infensia, and if you're new to this channel, I do a bit of Blender modeling, some Unity tutorials, some vlogging and things like that. So uh, in this video, I'm going to do a low polygon character once again. I, I did that in Blender 2.79 before, and time has come to make a character now in Blender 2.8 as well, so you can see what that looks like. So in this first episode, I'm going to model the character itself and just colorize him. And then I'll follow up with an episode to rig him and get him animated as well. In this video I'm going to narrate a bit differently. So instead of uh, recording as I do, I'll actually cut it a little bit better and then add uh, some more detailed narration and the keystrokes so you can follow along and uh, rewind and go for back and forth to certain parts. If you just keep uh, repeating this process over and over and model uh, any objects that you can think of, you're going to nail those shortcuts. And uh, when you do, you're going to find it uh, real uh, com <laughs> comforting. The comforting. So you're going to find it really, hmm, what word am I looking for? You're going to find it really enjoyable to be able to nail those keystrokes every time and just model things straight away without having to think too much. It, it'll come natural. Just keep repeating it, keep practicing it, and you'll get it. Enjoy this first video. I hope you like it, and uh, thumbs up if you do, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more videos. Enough talking already. Let's get started. Press Shift A and go to Mesh Cube. Press Control R to make a loop cut along the green Y axis. Hit 3 at the top of your keyboard and select Faces. Select the face and press Delete on your keyboard and delete the vertices. And then click on the spanner and go to Add Modifier and add a Mirror Modifier and enable Clipping. And then I'll fast forward a bit using the S key to scale and Control R to add loop cuts and I reshape into a torso. And then I select the face where the arm should be, hit E to extrude it and I move it out along the X axis. Then I click 2 at the top of the keyboard to go into Edge Select and I hold Shift and Alt and I click on an edge to select a loop around. And then I resize to shape the arm and the torso again. And then I select a face that's suitable to add the legs and I hit E to extrude and I use R to rotate and then G to move it in the scene. And then I use E to extrude down the legs and then I go into Side View and I click the face and I extrude the foot and then I do some refining just uh, by selecting edges and moving them in to tighten up the torso, shaping up the feet a little bit. Hit an Alt Shift and click on, on edges to loop select them. So I select all around the shoulder and I use S to scale it. And I use uh, G to grab and move it. And then sometimes I also hit the, uh, when I grab and move, I click on the axis, for example, X axis to force movement along the X axis. And then I just keep refining it. Also, when you hit Shift Space and G to get the little gizmo or the manipulator so you get the axis, then when you move, you can actually click on the axis itself. You see that I do that quite a bit by clicking on the green or the blue axis, and that'll force movement in that direction along that axis only. And then I add the neck, so I select the top face, hit I to inset it, and uh, hit B as well after you inset it if you don't get it to join up perfectly in the middle. And then I add the neck by just selecting the face and I use a lot of E to extrude up for the head and then I use S to scale it along the way when I extrude. I wasn't satisfied with the way the head tilted so I selected some of the top faces and then I hit R to rotate it and then G to move it a bit backwards. And then I thought he was a little bit too small so I cl click A on the keyboard to select all the faces and then I use S to scale it up. And then I can just move it along the x-axis as well. Since I've got clipping enabled, it won't split them in the center. So I made them a little bit wider. And then I refine them as well by moving the bottom parts of the faces up to make the legs a little bit shorter. And then I add a little bend by selecting the edges to reshape the back of the leg behind the knee. That'll make it fold a little bit better when you animate. Then I wanted to recenter them a little bit, so I went up to hit x-ray so I can see through and then I use B to box select all the vertices that'll make sure everything is selected in the scene and then I just move him. I wasn't uh, happy with the arms enough so I selected some of the faces and moved them back in and then you can ha hit uh, on the keypad I hit uh, 1, 3 and 7 a lot to switch between front, side and top view and here I'm in front view and I use uh, just scaling to reshape the arms, E to extrude, S to scale a lot, and I create the hand by doing that. Then I select the top and bottom faces of the hands, and then I use S to scale it, and I hit Z to scale it along the Z axis up and down to make the hand. And then I split it with Control R, and then I extrude the face for the thumb with the E key. 
When you use the front, side and top view using the 1, 3 and 7 keypad keys, that's orthographic mode which is really handy, there's no perspective so it's quite easy to align things then. And I just continue to reshape the character a little bit by selecting edges. Also important is to use 1, 2 and 3 on the top of the keyboard, not the keypad but at the top of the keyboard. 1 is vertex select, 2 is edge select and 3 is face select. His posture was too good, so I used B to box select when I have X-ray enabled and vertex mode, so I can reshape a little bit his posture, make it worse in this case. Not recommended in real life. And then I reshape the neck a little bit. Maybe he's been sitting at the computer a bit too much like I have, so think about that. Stretch that neck. I decided to give him a beard, so I use 3 at the top of the keyboard to go into face select and then I hold the shift key to multiple select a few faces and then I click I to inset it and then I use just to move along the axis a little bit and I use S to scale it a little bit and uh, the E key is used quite frequently as well to extrude. And then for the ear I click uh, on a face and I hit I to inset it and then I use R to rotate it a little bit and S to scale it and move it a little bit into place. And then I press E to extrude the ear, S to scale it, and then E to extrude again. And then I need to make it a little bit thinner, so I manually go in and refine the edges. I click 2 to go to edge select, and then I just refine those edges a little bit for the ear. And his beard wasn't long enough, so I select the beard face, and then I just move it down a little bit. And then I refine his chin, I press 1 on the keyboard to go to vertex select, and then I use the shift space and G to get the little axis tool so I can slide it along the X, Y and Z axis. And then in the same way we added the beard, I select multiple faces holding the shift key to select faces for the hair and then I hit E to extrude it and then I refine it a little bit and then I extrude at the front of the hair as well. Remember to keep switching between 1, 2 and 3 on the top of your keyboard to go between vertex, edge and face select and then just refine everything as needed. And then I use uh, Control R again to do a loop cut and then I add some uh, sleeves for his arms and also at the bottom of his legs for the pants to flare a little bit, 70s style. And then I add a belt again, just use Control R to add a, a loop cuts and then I select around the new faces and then I switch to individual origins and then I hit E to extrude and then S to scale and Y to scale it along the Y axis to extrude a little bit. And then I'm adding eyes, so I select a face at the on the face <laughs> and then I, I disable clipping and then I press Shift S cursor to select it and then Shift A to add a cube and S to scale it down to make it small enough for the eye. S to scale on the X axis and then I move it a little bit into place. And keep in mind now that when I use Shift A to add the cube, it's actually adding geometry into the existing object. It's not creating a separate object. The eyes are part of the same object as the character itself. I'm adding a color to his top, so I press Ctrl R for a loop cut, and then S to scale it. And then I go into Select Individual Faces by holding the Shift key, and remember to hit the 3 on your keyboard to go into Face Select if you haven't already. And then I just move it out a little bit, and then I switch back into Vertex Select, by using one on the keyboard at the top and then I just move the vertices on their axis. And then I'm going to add a belt buckle, so I do similar to the way I did with the eyes. I do Shift A and select a cube and then I disable clipping and I press S to scale it down, move it into place, keep using S back and forth and moving it to where I need it and then I select the inner face and then I delete the face and then with clipping enabled, I press L to select all the linked vertices. That'll select the belt, belt buckle itself. And then I move it into the center and the clipping will actually merge that for me. And then I resize it a little bit with scaling again. I select the front face, press I to inset and then E to extrude it inwards. And that completes the belt buckle. And when we rig this character, we need some extra geometry by the knees and elbows. So I press Ctrl R to add some loop cuts above and below the knee and the same for where the elbow is. Control R and then add one on the inside and then one on the outside. So you have an elbow. All right, time has come to colorize this guy. So I go to the shading tab and then I select the material and I already imported a texture from when I modeled the car. So if you have a look at that tutorial, you'll see how that was imported. 
And then I go into UV editing tab and I select all the vertices or all the faces uh, with the A key. And then I reset the UV. So in the UV dropdown, there's a reset feature. And then on the left side where you can see the texture itself, I select everything there as well and press S to scale it down by pressing 0.01 .01 on the keyboard to scale it down to 1%. And that allows me to select vertices or select faces on the character, as you can see I'm doing. I select the face, for example, or the top of the head. And then on the left side, I can use G to grab it and move those boxes for, or those UV maps for the head, for example, for the hair, for the skin, for the shoes and everything. And I can place that over the pixels in the texture itself. And that will effectively colorize the character and, and using a very little texturing space. You can use B for box select and have the X-ray enabled so you can select multiple faces quite easily. And then on the left side, just move the UVs into the colors that you want. So blue pants, gray buckle, darker gray inside the buckle. And I finish off by colorizing the belt brown using the exact same technique. And then I see that I missed a little bit on the back of his bump, so I colorized that with a blue color as well to finish him off. And then I just finish off a little bit with some darker shades of red on his sleeve, and that completes uh, the texturing process of this guy. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Keep repeating these steps over and over again. Keep hammering those keystrokes in uh, until your brain hurts and you'll nail it. I'm sure you will. Stay tuned for the next video and don't forget to subscribe and like if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bonus tip. Uh, I was gonna grab a screenshot for my thumbnail and also for my video. And I realized that I've never used this before, but if you go up to the viewport settings and you select cavities and uh, select screen space and world space, and this particular screen space, that's the most magic one, it really shades those edges nice off your low poly model. If you wanna grab some screenshots, you, you should really have a look at that and also enable shadows if you haven't. You can also render in Blender, Blender Render, uh, using the workbench settings and that will have the cavities feature for you. And that's what I use to render the little intro video with the rotating car and guy. So for your low poly stuff, have a look at that and uh, play around with it. So that's my little bonus tip for this time.